Hello, this is Dazzling One, and it is hard to believe that it's 2016. It feels like yesterday it was 2013, and when I blink it'll be 2020. But this week I just want to talk about the direction I feel the world is headed in, because so much has happened last year, and I feel that a lot is going to happen this year as well. For one thing, we have our elections coming up at the end, and I think that the way they're going about each candidate spreading a message, a lot of it is hate-based, and it's all part of the huge agenda. Then, of course, we have gun control that's being talked about. We also have, um, even with the stocks, it's not looking so pretty. I do think that there is an economic collapse that will occur soon. It just seems like the world as we know it never going to be the same. And many people think it's just a cycle we're in, things will get better. Well, others think that we're literally at the end. I lean more towards the side that things are looking more like Yeshua described. And he talked about how it'd be as the days of Noah, and in Ecclesiastics 1.9, there really is nothing new under the sun. Everything we see now has happened before. And with the direction the world is headed in, I see a pattern, and it ties into what I said in the video I did, Some Things on My Mind, and I I talked about the Hegelian dialectic, and how it factored into everything that had to do with the Paris attacks, as well as everything else going on at that moment. We see more and more stories about how there was some mass shooting, there was some terrorist event, It used to phase people, it used to scare them, now it's so common that many of us roll our eyes about it, whether it's for, again, these people are getting crazier, or, oh no, another false flag, another psyop. And the thing about it is, they want us to get to that point where we no longer see much rhyme or reason in anything, really. When I talked about Albert Pike and the letter he mentioned Three World Wars, and of course the authenticity of the letter is often debated, but One thing you must keep in mind with it is that it did make mention of how there was this Zionism versus Islam that was going to be what the last world war was going to be fought over, and I definitely see that happening. All of that is all part of the plan, and I really do see more and more people, especially in my generation I would say, who are stepping away from faith saying that it's useless, that people are judgmental, that they're bigots in it, and Sadly, there is some truth to the fact that there have been a lot of atrocities done in the name of God, and there have been a lot of people who have abused the word of God and misinterpreted it to fit their own means, but at the same time, it's all part of agenda, because in reality, they don't care about us being irreligious, they don't care about us all being agnostic or atheist, they care about getting us to move away from any form of religion that's counterintuitive to them, and to embrace the one world religion. And so as more people believe that they are enlightening themselves and stepping towards a means of logic and reason, in reality, they're moving closer to the fallen angel religion. And when I was studying Atlantis and Lemuria last year, and I did a video on it, I talked about just the things that we saw with it. And one of the huge things that they prized was this idea that the perfect being was neither male or female, that it was androgynous, that opposites were an illusion, and I definitely see that. This whole ideal that man can be God, this whole ideal that we see even with entertainment, we have people calling themselves I am. One of God's names is I am, and I thought that was interesting because we have so many people who have albums, I am this, we have people like Will I am, and so forth. And I see more and more people embracing this ideal that we are our own God, that we are our own master, and so forth. And even in churches, you have more people who are pushing this Gnostic message out there. And people are more fixated now on knowledge and power than they are on God. And even with the whole androgynous thing, even my classes I took, like psychology and sociology, when we talked about it, it was seen as a positive thing. And it's interesting because even with the whole transgender movement, one thing I noticed about it when our teacher was mentioning it was how more and more people, rather than completely mutilating or changing themselves, because, you know, there's top surgery and then there's bottom surgery that people can get, rather than getting both, some of them are just choosing to do top surgery. And so what that means is you have some people walking around who look like one sex, but they have the private part of the other sex. And what's interesting about this, it resembles bafflement, and on his arms it says solve coagulon, 
each arm which is talking about the transformation it's alchemy the fallen angel religion taught that the perfect being was neither it was both and it's interesting to see this also really the end goal with trans anything like with the 52 year old man who said he felt like a six-year-old girl which to me was creepy because this could open pandora's box if you have pedophiles pretending to identify as children whether it's of the same sex or opposite sex of themselves it's just crazy how we've gotten to this point where there's so many trans this trans that the whole um idea is that we want to get to transhumanism and when we get to transhumanism it's about the essentially man becoming god or making vessels demons to possess like they did on i frankenstein so we have half man half pig it's gonna look a lot like the days of noah it was like what we think of as greek mythology centaurs satars and so forth running around and see we think that all of this stuff is bogus too many people do they think that to talk like this is people who just worry about nothing but in reality, we really are moving in that direction, even in our teachings. Even what we think of as philosophy, I always thought it was kind of laughable that people make fun of pseudoscience, like astrology, numerology, and all of the stuff that they deem pseudoscience, magic. Yet, many of the Greek philosophers went to Egypt, to the mystery schools, who believed in magic and these mystery religions, and they took a lot of their knowledge from them, and they took it back, and they taught it. In the form of philosophy but of course in academia philosophy isn't shunned yet pseudoscience is so it's interesting to see how really more and more people while they may think they're giving up on god that they're becoming an atheist a nihilist agnostic whatever they're identifying as there's so many titles out there today i don't keep up with them it's really not about that it's about getting us all to accept this one world religion and even with the television shows that they're pumping out there childhood's end was mentioned to me and i still want to cover these shows i didn't watch it yet but just the trailers i saw for it and what i read about it where once again you have aliens you have the devil can he be trusted maybe he's not bad just like the show lucifer the devil's a good guy in it the x-men apocalypse god is the villain because Really, that character who's the villain who says he's called many names, Ra, Krishna, Yahweh, they use the name Yahweh, it's supposed to be God's name, Hebrew, they're really pushing this ideal that maybe Lucifer is misunderstood, maybe we have it wrong, maybe he's not bad after all, the serpent was the bringer of knowledge in the Garden of Eden, this whole ideology, and so I really see more and more of them pushing us towards that, and even though people say that we're moving away from religion and in another hundred years there will be no more religious people they'll all be living under a rock in reality i think there will be more people into satanism than there will be of irreligious people because of the direction that they're taking us in with all of this because one of the largest black masses in history was held in detroit last year and it seems like even if people think that it's more symbolic or joking to embrace satanism in reality this is all part of what the antichrist and his one world religion will be about or when the fallen angels are turned and they call themselves aliens or call themselves false gods either way and even with movies coming out like batman versus superman you saw superman had um the statue it was vandalized it said false god on it even on the movie the new superman remake he was godlike i would say the avengers movie they did the second one they called them gods and I really see them pushing this ideal that it's not good enough to be a superhero anymore. They need to be gods. And many people are eating that up. They like this ideal, this return to gods. Gods and monsters. Gods and demons. Even with the movie Gods of Egypt, once again, they're retelling a set, Osiris and Horus. And we saw that with Lion King. They always retell us the same story again and again with new names and faces. But they've been preparing us since we've been children to accept it and like I said in my other video I did and you guys brought up other interesting movies TV shows books that I could have went over as well the list is endless they prep us from a young age to accept demons to accept monsters to accept aliens whether or not we grow up with family members who are cognizant of it or not it's hidden so nicely it's packaged so beautifully and now they're just being more blatant with it. I've never seen this amount of paranormal movies, TV shows on television like I have before. Really, it's all about moving us to that mindset, that 
consciousness. And if you notice most of these movements out there, whether we're talking about the new age movement, they all talk about consciousness and mind. And it's funny to me because this consciousness that they're talking about of realizing the God in you or the goddess in you, it's all connecting back to the Garden of Eden and Satan. They all are obsessed with the third eye, with the eye of Horus, which essentially goes back to Lucifer. It goes back to Satan. And it's funny how no matter what you run to, whether you're running to complete godlessness or you're running to some type of philosophy or mystical religion, that it all seems to intermingle. And they all these supposed gods all are connected. So I guess what I'm trying to say in short is that I definitely see how they've bamboozled us to believe that while we're moving forward, that this has never been done before in reality, we're moving more towards the days of Noah than people could ever imagine. And so I anticipate that this year and the years to come, we're going to see more blatant messages concerning fallen angels. We're going to see more pushes towards gun control, towards a police state, towards an economic collapse. But in reality, it's all to meet that one point. So my advice would be to pray, to always be alert about what's going on, don't sweep it under the rug, to really be able to talk to other people who share similar beliefs. It's good online that we have each other at least, because not everyone has that around them. And to, if you can, like I said, just always start with questions when it comes to getting people to kind of think outside of the matrix, and it can go a long way. So I hope that this message was interesting for you and that you have a wonderful week. Take care and Yahweh bless you.